Hello, everybody on Facebook. This is Mr. Wright with West Pine Middle School Choirs and Musical Theater. It is 1058. In two minutes, our live session with Jeff Crady will begin. Jeff is not currently in this room, but I've talked to him this morning. We've tried out the technology with Jeff. We know that it works, and so he should be joining us in the next couple minutes. Uh, if it turns out that there's a problem getting Jeff in here, then I'll make a phone call to him and, and we shall get going um, and we'll get him in the, a different way. I, I do have uh, about 27 students or 26 students in here right now and we're also joined by our technology uh, diff, uh, Miss Eiler. Um, so Miss Eiler, would you like to say hello? Hello, I have my um, camera off just so the meeting runs smoothly, but I'm here, so let me know if you guys have an issue. <laughs> that sounds great. And I think Miss Wiley, our principal, will be dropping by as well. Oh, Miss Wiley just joined. She was waiting for me to go ahead and call upon her. Hello, Miss Wiley. I just jumped in. Hey, everybody. We're getting excited. So, uh, so that you know, there, there. We've, got about 20, there. we've got about 27 students here currently. Um, Jeff is not quite yet logged on. Um, we had some technology uh, challenges yesterday with the number of students that were in here. We had 30 students in here yesterday. Um, we have 60 students that have registered to be in here today. So whether or not the next 30 show up, I'm not sure. Um, but we had problems unmuting ourselves yesterday with the number of students that were in here. Um, but I think that one of the reasons why we had a, a challenge was that all the students had downloaded the grid view. So we've had most of the students go back to the regular view to speed up the bandwidth. That sound right, Ms. Eilers? Yep, that sounds right. Just, yeah, I turned off my grid view too. So we should be good to go now that we're all in here. Great. Um, <laughs> And I do not see Jeff yet, but let, it's 11 o'clock. Let me give him a call. One second. Nope, Jeff's here. All right, there we go. I said admit, please. Jeff! I don't know that he just got in. Jeff! All right. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Hey, I'm pretty good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm going to pin you so that... Uh, Hopefully we can see you're a little larger. There you go. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Mr. Jeff Crady. Um, Jeff is uh, living in, in, in New York City and he is currently, like all of us, um, quarantined. And so uh, I've decided to uh, create a, a session for us quarantine people called Quarantine Creations. And Jeff is going to work with us over the course of three weeks and one hour sessions each week. And we're going to have an opportunity to uh, listen uh, to lessons that Jeff will teach us. He'll give us some exercises. Um, Jeff, go ahead and say a couple things before we get started. All right. Um, hey, guys. What a way to learn. Uh, what a way to learn. <laughs> I mean, here we are. Uh, all in our homes, and I hope we can. Uh... The good news is, I, I think acting is one thing that, believe it or not, you can work on by yourself. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to find some some stuff that lets solo learning uh, be effective and possible. And so I was talking to Tori about about this and what we can do. And uh, I'm going to take you through a couple exercises today that actually. The cast of Les Mis. I was in the Broadway revival of Les Mis. That was my Broadway debut in 2006. Um, uh, that's what I moved to New York for. And the first few days of rehearsal, we played acting games. We played. We we did exercises as a company, which I had never done before. Uh, not really professionally, because most of the time you're under such. Uh, 
you, you have a limited amount of time. But when you get to Broadway, uh, they have more money, so you get to rehearse longer. And so we actually got to spend the first couple of days just playing these games to get to know one another and to kind of hone our, our skills a little bit because a lot of Les Mis is, is improv. Uh, there were several large group scenes that were not blocked or choreographed at all. Every night was something different and unique. And, um, and so in order to do that, we had to, um, we had to play these games to, to put ourselves in the right mindset to do so. So um, I thought, I would like to see, did you guys try, did you guys play any games so yet today? We're, we, we have not played games yet today. And, and in fact, what I'd like to do before we uh, start the session, I think that what we'll do is an introductory where um, I'll go ahead and share with the students. And by the way, I, I've told you, but uh, we're also on Facebook Live right now as well. Um, so one of the reasons we're on Facebook Live is just to make sure that if there's any technology glitching that the students can't unmute themselves, they could always leave the room and then actually go on to Facebook if they've got an account or their parents have an account and watch us from our West Pine Middle School Chorus and Musical Theater Booster Club uh, Facebook page. Um, Sweet. So Jeff and I have now worked together, this being our third project, I think since 2017. Um, Jeff and I first met each other with Dr. Cra uh, with Dr. Herrick. Uh, Dr. Herrick had written a, uh, a, a play called The Gospel According to Les Mis. And it, uh, I've got some pictures. Let me show you something here. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, first off, let me... Push present. Um, so, so that we are familiar with um, who who Jeff is and and his uh, resume, um, Jeff, you just closed in the summertime a, a production of Tootsie on Broadway. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, we closed January fifth. And then, and you got to play the leading the leading role. I remember seeing many pictures of you in uh, the Dorothy outfit. Yes, I was the standby. So it, um, a standby is like an understudy. Uh, well, it is an understudy, but uh, usually when you say understudy, you mean that you're in the show at night in an ensemble track. Uh, so I was not in the show unless I was on for uh, Michael, for which was played by Santino Fontana, who won the Tony Award for uh, for Best Actor this last year. And... Um, he played Michael slash Dorothy because the whole plot of our show is that Michael transforms himself into a woman to get a job. So um, I did drag. Boom. Yeah. I've never done that before. Yeah. I learned a lot. And so then Billy Elliot, uh, you and I were having an interesting conversation the other day about your audition process for Billy Elliot. Didn't you say that you had somewhere in the neighborhood of a 25-hour audition? 25 yes, hours. It, was, it wasn't just one uh, single audition. That was over the course of a month. I had probably, I don't know, I honestly, half a dozen different sessions, but several of them were for eight hours long, uh, where we would, we would audition from, you know, 10 in the morning until six in, in the evening. And they would have us do everything. They would have us sing and dance and act and, um, uh, you know, dance. We had to do tap, jazz, ballet. We had to do ballet in tap shoes. It was um, it was quite an ordeal. They had us just to and then run obstacle courses. They also set up an obstacle course for us to run. So it was. Um, oh, my daughter Louise wants to say hi. This is my daughter Louise. One second, I got to get out and go back and see Louise. Ah! Oh, hi, Louise. How are you? Oh, here. Oh, you guys are mad. <laughs> Hello, Louise. Hello. Can you say hi? You're so cute. Yeah. Um, how old is Louise? If I, if I recall correctly, Louise was just born in 2017 when you first worked with us. Is that correct? That's right. She turns three. Do you remember what your birthday is? April 7th. April 7th. Yeah. And I, we must have done about May. Yeah, she's getting ready to turn three. And this is Lena. Do you want to say hi? Lena is... Hi, Lena. Lena. She's six. They're uh, getting ready to go outside and um, play in our parking lot. Well, because we'll have to go to parks right now. Sure, <laughs> but since you've got them here, I've got a great segue. You know, our students just did Frozen. We did... Yeah, and Lena, um, I actually know that you sung a, a, a trio with your mom and your dad. Because, you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you may not know, but... Uh, 
Jeff's wife is Nikki Daniels, and uh, Nikki's also a uh, Broadway star. Um, I think that she she was in uh, the Book of Mormon, but did you not say that she just finished relatively recently a regional production of Hamilton, where she played um, which character did she play? Angelica. She's right here. Come here. Come say hi. This is my wife, Nikki. Hello, hi. Nikki. Um, I play Angelica in Hamilton. Awesome. Our kids love it. We were actually getting ready to do three songs uh, for our spring concert with orchestra, but we, we got shut down with COVID. But um, hey, since you guys are there, can I take a moment and, and share with you and the students a video that I found of you three singing? Okay, so um, if, if you'll indulge us, we as a family. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was a few years ago now? I thought it was crazy. Oh, my God, I had a big spirit of the Lord of his life. I I was thinking the same thing. It's like, I've been searching my whole life to find my own place. And maybe it's the party talking or the chocolate fondue. But with you, but with you, I will find the seeds. And it's not like I've ever known before. I still can tell. I'm not joking. 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 Yes. That was fantastic. All right, they're going to go outside, but... And that's... So when you guys go outside, because of the COVID, uh, the quarantine, you guys can go outside on your... and play around in the parking lot. That's about all you can do, right? Yeah. yeah. Dunk it in for right now. I got you. Okay. Well, it's great seeing you guys. Bye-bye. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's 10 after 11 right now. Um, and again, this is going to be a three-hour workshop. We're going to do one hour today. Uh, we're going to have spring break next week where we will not be meeting. And then uh, we haven't chosen the day the following week, but the following week we'll do one, another one-hour session. And then the third one-hour session will be that third week down the road. Um, but since we're just starting out, I would like to do one more um, presentation and then we're going to turn it over to, to our students that will play some acting games and then Jeff is going to take over and, and do some acting games of his own. But I did want to share with you, so um, Jeff and I uh, first met each other um, when we were doing uh, the Gospel According to Les Mis and Dr. Herrick uh, wrote the uh, Gospel According to Les Mis and so this is a picture of the directors and our accompanists, uh, Alan Dobbinspeck. Um, but I wanted to play with you just a quick um, clip of the gospel according to Les Mis. I'm going to play two clips. I'm going to play one where it was uh, two of our students. Uh, this was Matthew Butler and um, Mr. McNamara. Um, James McNamara were the students. And then that's me before I had a beard, if you can believe that. But um, then I'm going to have Jeff sing a brief uh, bit of music for you, and then we're going to get going. Oh, wrong one. Let's see something. Tell his reverence your story. Let us see if he's impressed. You are lodging here last night. You were the honest bishop's guest. And then now to Christian goodness, when he heard about your plight, you maintain he made a present of the silver. That is right. But my friend, you left so early. Surely something slipped your mind. You forgot I gave these also. Would you leave the best behind? So, messieurs, you may release him. For this man is spoken true, I commend you for your duty. Now God's blessings go with you. 
to where Jeff started to sing. My life he claims for God above. Can such things be? For I had come to hate the world. This world that always hated me. Take an eye for an eye. Turn your heart into stone. This is all I have lived for. This is all I have known. One word from him and tight. All right. So that's a little bit uh, about how we first met, and it just shows you the, the chops that uh, Jeff has. Um, Jeff. Yes. I would like, if it's okay with you, to indulge uh, for a couple more minutes. And I want you now to have the opportunity to see uh, the production the kids did with Frozen. And oh, after, I would love that. And, and I think after that, then, we will have had the opportunity for our students to get to know you, you to get to know the students. And so in this uh, introductory moments of our three-hour session, uh, we should have a, a much more uh, – Better, ch better chance of familiarizing ourselves with one another. So yeah. let me go ahead and I'll show you uh, just a few clips. One second. And this was March 6th and 7th, just last month. We were the last, we got lucky. Uh, we were the last weekend before um, the, the uh, school system had to close down because of the COVID-19 scare. Wow. Is that a projection in the back? Yeah, that is that is a projection. Wow. And it may or may not work. Let me see something. I'll give it one more chance. Here we go. Let me see. Yeah. 
shout out for the I'm going to back up. Here we go. Well, now they know. So, anyways, Jeff, that's that's a little bit about uh, uh, what our kids can do. Um, wow, they're, they're, that they're, is they're incredible, impressive. aren't they? We're, yeah. We are what a production. We, we are blessed in this county to have uh, strong art programs throughout. Um, we feed a phenomenal uh, drama and choral department at Pinecrest High School. Um, and then finally, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start, stop the introductions in one moment. But the, the students in this class, uh, we had uh, 10 of our students in the fall make the North Carolina Middle School Honors Course. Um, that is uh, it's an honors course that uh, have about a thousand people audition and only 151 students, 153 students made it. And of the 153, we had 10 of them. We were the uh, highest school, elementary, middle, or high school placement in the North Carolina honors course. So we're blessed. Our kids are just knocking it out of the park. And then Eliza, who played Elsa, uh, she was the only student in the state this year that made the honors course five years running when dating back to elementary school. So, um, All right, Eliza. All yeah, right. This, yeah, we, uh, we know who Eliza because we knew that was Elsa, right? So yeah, yeah. So wow. nonetheless, those are our students. So we are tickled silly that you're going to go ahead and uh, help us along our, our way and that we can actually use this time of quarantine uh, and still have relevant, really strong learning going on. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, when I look at a program like this, I see extremely talented kids. Uh, of course, I see an extremely talented instructor, but I also see a, a really supportive community because now I've been down to perform in that North Carolina region four times in the last four years. And honestly, it's such, uh, it's kind of amazing because I, it's not a large population wise. Right. This, these are not large communities, but I'm astounded at how these communities uh, you guys are in Pinecrest, and I was in where? Where just Sand Hills Community just, College. Uh huh. It's amazing how they. Um, I was in Garner. Oh, I uh, performing in Garner, and I'm just amazed at how you guys, part of your culture in that area of the country, is to support the arts, and uh, that is awesome. And it's that is not it is not the case everywhere in this country. So uh, you know, kids really you are lucky that you grow up in a, in a area of the country like that. Um, take advantage of everything that you can while you're there. That's, that's awesome. Really good work. I appreciate it. Now, how would you like to proceed? Do you want us to play one of our, you, you had mentioned you'd like to see us play some games first or you want to move forward? Um, you know, I actually, I do, I, cause I want to break the ice a little bit. So I want, uh, I don't want anybody to, f yeah. Why don't you guys do, let me see what you guys do as especially how, how do we make this work over video? I know this is all a little bit crazy, but I would like to see, yeah, I would like to see you guys play a game. Okay. So students, have you all logged into the, the Google classroom and put your name on the roster? Um, if you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and get your names off the roster and put you into a random uh, name generator, and we're going to choose students just based on random uh, a random wheel. Okay, so let's do that first. Wait, Tori, are you still you're still presenting? Can you take that off for right now so that maybe it'll help with the uh, delay time? I will. One more second. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Absolutely. Um. All right, it's stopping. There we go.
All right, here we go. Um, we got uh, Tabitha Turner. And Leah Carter. All right, so Tabitha Turner and Leah Carter. Can the two, let's see, I'll pin Tabitha, maybe. All right, and Leah, where are we at? There we go. All right. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. All right. So, Leah, would you unmute yourself? And let's start by doing one word story. So, uh, Tabitha and Leah, just go back and forth doing a one word story. Leah, you need to unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself, Leah? It's down at the bottom of the screen. Well, let's move forward. Who can unmute themselves? Alishka? I, mean, I can. I, I can. can unmute myself. Okay. I can unmute myself. Zia and Alishka. One word stories. Go back and forth, please. It's all right. I'm not on the wheel. Okay, one second. Hey, Alishka. Okay. okay. I'm typing in chat, but no one heard me. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to let Leah and Alishka go ahead, and uh, Zia and Alishka, go ahead. Zia, you start. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a ginormous frog that was so big big good all right let's move forward we're gonna play a different game we're gonna play newscaster um <gasps> caitlin debose can you unmute yourself emily johnson I can. emily johnson hi do you guys know how to play newscaster yeah no. let me explain the game so it's actually, I think it's called Headline News, because what we're going to do is start a news broadcast, and you're going to choose a uh, category. Perhaps it's weather, maybe it's sports. Um, and then the first person would say, in today's headlines in sports, Michael, Jacks, Michael Jordan came out of retirement, and he started playing basketball, but he used footballs instead. And then the next person would take that story over and they'd finish the story and then they'd start an, another headline and they'd say, and now in politics. Can I start? Please, go ahead. In today's headlines in sports, a group of squirrels have tried out for the NBA and made it. Of course, this is all very interesting. Their official statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> We officially have three vice presidents. It sounds crazy. They're the dynamic duo. On to you, Caitlin. Yes, they love to call themselves the vice amigos. <laughs> and they seem to think they're very talented in their acting skills on local television, but I don't think so. In other news, it is raining pieces of meatballs. Of course, one might wonder, what type of meatballs? They're no ordinary meatballs, folks. <laughs> they are pig, pig meatballs, but not the ordinary, the bacon kind. It is made out of the pig's nose. Mm. Now, moving on to beauty. We have a groundbreaking discovery in makeup where... All right, uh, let's, let's stop. We're, yeah. we're going to do one more. Um, let's well do done. Well Ainsley. Done. Let's do Ainsley and Kate Grantham. All right. Um, Kate, do you want to start? This angers me. Hello. Kate's having a hard Kate. time unmuting herself. 
If you can, if you can press if you can press it, Control D, then you can unmute yourself. Perfect. On your uh, she's she's good to go. This is the last session. So here we go. Ainsley, go. Um, today in politics, we found out that Kermit the Frog is wanting to try out, not try out, is wanting to get is wanting to overthrow um, our now our now president. He wants to become the vice and the actual president. On to you, Leah. Kate. I mean, Kate, sorry. Yes, Kermit the Frog, running for both president and vice president. Let's see how this happens. Today in sports, we have pigs playing soccer. <laughs> yes, pigs playing soccer. Um, some, um, some might call it that it is a breaking discovery in sports. But now we find that, but now in beauty, we find that Beyonce wants to become a model, but not just any model, no. She wants to try on pigskins. On to you, Kate. <laughs> pigskins, the new fashion, straight from Indonesia. <laughs> now, all right, all right, you guys, all of you. We have a tsunami of soda heading Look. straight towards South Africa. That's great, Kate, yeah. fantastic. All four of you did a fantastic job. Let's turn this over to Jeff. Wow, nice work. Um, this is hard to do that, that, especially, you know, that kind of stuff. Wait, Tori, it says you're still presenting. Can you just undo that? I didn't know that I was way. still presenting. That's okay. Let's see. Technology is hard. Oh my. Stop presenting. I thought I stopped. Uh -huh. There you go. I thought I stopped presenting a long time ago. That's nope. okay. I gotcha. Um, so with this medium that we've got here, you know, this uh, over the internets, we're going to try and do some learning. Um, it got me thinking about things that I have done in the past, things that uh, have been helpful to me. And so uh, hopefully you'll find them helpful and we'll see if this can work. Um, so, you know, this is a little bit trial and error. I want to talk today about, um, I want to talk about what people do. Because that's our goal as actors, as performers, is to do what people do. And that's the thing that's the most real, and that's the thing that will be the most moving, and that's the thing that will be the most funny, um, is if we just do what people do. And um, what people do, naturally, is we, oh wait, if you have yourself unmuted, can you mute yourself? And then um, I'll give everybody a shot. Just check and see if you're... Um, So what we try to do in theater and in any kind of performing, in singing, you know, this also, this doesn't just apply to uh, your performances as actors. This applies to your performance as singers. This applies to your choral music um, because we do have to uh, mean what we say and, and perform and act and give things gravitas when we're singing in chorus even. So this applies to all kinds of performing. Uh, this isn't just for doing a play. Um, my hope is that you can take some of this and apply it in one way or another um, to, to all aspects of your performance world. Um, so we want to do what people do and we want to give things weight and importance and we want to raise the stakes. That's what we talk about a lot in theater here on Broadway. Uh, a note that you can get a lot is just as simple as the director looking at you and saying, hey, in that scene, raise the stakes. And if you get that note, uh, you know what that means as an actor. It means that you haven't given something the full legitimacy of what it means. You haven't delved into the implications of what is happening to your character, right? So, um, and you do that in lots of different ways. You do that emotionally. Um, but I don't want to talk about emotions today. I don't want to talk about, because that's the, that's the next step and we'll get there and we'll talk about emotions. But more importantly today, I just want to talk about making the audience believe that you are a person on stage. How do you do what people do on stage? Um, we're going to talk about things in a little bit about how do you make somebody believe that you're yawning? I, do you know how many fake yawns I've seen on stage? It's isn't that embarrassing when you see somebody on stage go, <sighs> you know, <laughs> like that's the worst. How do you make somebody believe that you're cold? How do you make somebody believe that you're hot? How do you make somebody believe that you're asleep on stage? What do you do? And um, you know, the, these are just 
questions of existing, right? Like how do you exist as a person on stage? Um, so I'm gonna talk about that. Um, but before that, uh, I hope you all have just a little bit of room around you because I'm gonna ask you to get up in a minute. Um, we're gonna do something a little bit physical here. Uh, this is an exercise that we did in Les Mis. The I told you the first couple days we played a bunch of games. And because so much of Les Mis is mime, right? We, we, we use props, of course, but so much of it are mime props. Uh, the first whole scene, look down, look down, da, 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 that whole thing with the guys uh, in the mine quarry, you know, they're hammering, but we didn't have hammers. We, it was all mime. Most of the show is done that way. Um, so we spent a lot of time working with mime, and I wanna take you through a, a couple things that will help you give weight to mime because mime when it's done badly is also really embarrassing. Uh, so let's, let's do something. If you can, uh, stand up and, and I want to still be able to see, I'm going to be looking at you. So I want to, uh, let's see, how do I turn on the, ah, there we go. Now I can see more of you stand up and give me a little bit of space. Move around. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, um, I want you to pick a sport in your head. Don't say it out loud. Think about what sport you've got. And uh, when I say go, I want you to play that sport for me. Ready, go. Nice. I love it. Keep going. I love it. Nice. Okay, good. Stop. Okay, good. Um, that's good. That's a nice warm up. Now I want you to play the sport, that same sport, as if you are competing against someone else. Ready, go. Aha. That changes things a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, stop. Okay. 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 You know what? Um, not just competing against someone else. I want you to play the sport as if you are competing at the Olympics. Ready, go. Aha. Hmm. Good. Wow. Good. Okay. Okay. Stop. Uh, now somebody answer me. How, how did it change? How did it change from when, uh, when I said, just play the sport to compete against somebody to competing at the Olympics? How did it change? You were like more determined each time to like win sort of a thing. Yeah. And you uh, try your best. Yeah. It's like, like, you're, you're like more active. Time. More active, more determined, trying your best. Yes. Our facial expressions change. Yeah, absolutely. Because, because we went from playing casually to like being determined and yes, yeah. <laughs> like wanting. Well, wanting what? Well, like wanting to, like yeah. you really want to be a wrestler. Like yeah. you were really committed to doing whatever you were doing. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's all. That's all exactly correct. Now we're gonna do it one more time, but this time. And I understand this is a little bit silly, but I want you to go there with me. Um, this time, I want you to play the sport as if your life depended on it. It's like the Hunger Games. Okay, I want you to play it as if if you lose, that's it. On your marks, get set, go. Okay, now I want you to play the sport as if your parents' life depended on it. If you lose this game, your parents die. Wow, Go. okay. Oh, shoot. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about that. How, how does it change? How does it change when it's life or death? Oh, wait, one person at a time. Let's see. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if you want to answer. Ainsley. Um, you definitely feel a lot more pressured because it's your parents and you really care about them. So if they died, that's all your fault. Like, you just feel this guilt. Yeah. Anybody else? Give me a thumbs up. See ya. Okay, so, like, if it was me, I would have tried harder because I didn't want to die. But I seem to, like, try harder with my parents because, like, it's basically, like, they give their, like, entire lives to protecting you. So you should try and protect them. Oh, wow, yeah. Anybody it's else? It's basically your turn to protect them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that interesting how, um, you know, we fight for ourselves, but we'd fight even more for, for somebody that we care about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... So that's kind of a little trick, and I really saw it in some of your performances, in what you were doing, the determination. You know, some of you, uh, even when it was competing at the Olympics, it was lighter. And then as soon as it became um, a life and death situation of sorts, your facial expression changed from not just determination, but what I saw in a couple, um, especially was, um, was fear. Mm -hmm. uh, anxiety right so now what we did was we took a silly game and we took it and we raised the stakes so i you know I and that's what we do in acting is we try to take things to the most extreme position uh especially in an exercise like this we try to see the full range as actors and we want to see what's the what's the most light-hearted and then what's the What's the deadliest? What, how, how can I give something the most passion? So um, when a director says raise the stakes, that's what they mean. They mean give something more weight. Make it matter more to you. And um, in this case, I saw the best results when I said your parents from, from some of you. Um, okay, good. And, and so that's also, you know, that also is a good warm up just to help you kind of get in your body and see the full range of what your body can do. Uh, warming up is very important as an actor. You never want to go on stage cold, right? You, you, you want your body to be warm so that you can remind, the same way you warm up your voice, you warm up your body, so that you remind it what it's capable of. Um, it's kind of like, uh, oh, this is a really silly exercise, um, and this is a little bit off topic, but it, it actually, it kind of, this just reminded me of one exercise that I use sometimes when, as an actor, I do shows a lot. You guys, how many times did you do Frozen? Uh, Tori, you said you guys did it how many times? We Three times? It. We did four it times? four times, four times. So you did that show four times. <laughs> That's a lot of work to do a show for, you know, just four times. Uh, typically on Broadway, you know, you hope that the show runs for years and years so that you have a job. Uh, Tootsie, we ran for nine months. So what did we do? You know, we did that show like 350 times, something like that. Billy Elliot, because I did it on Broadway for a year and a half and then on tour for a year. Oh, actually, we opened in Durham. That was our very first stop. We were the first company to open the new D-Pack in, in Durham. Um, was that Billy Elliot? Yeah, Billy Elliot, yeah. And what a great facility that was. Oh, absolutely. At this point, that was 10 years ago, though. My gosh. Um, but I did that show. I did Billy Elliot over a thousand times. And you mentioned that you did 65 previews. Oh, yeah, for Billy Elliot on Broadway. So before, before you even, even opened, opened, you had already run it 65 times. Yeah, yeah. We, we previewed for, for two months to give us rehearsal performances for audiences before we officially opened the show. So it's a different beast. And uh, one thing that is easy to have happen to you as an actor when you do a show a thousand times is it's easy to fall into habits with line readings. It's easy to end up saying a line exactly the same way every time. So, um, and that's also, even, even when I'm working on a, an audition, sometimes I fall into that habit. I'm trying to memorize something very quickly, and so I memorize how I'm gonna say it. That's never what you should do. You should never, never memorize how you're going to say a line. You should memorize the words. Memorize the words, but don't memorize how you're going to say them. And so um, another trick that an acting coach taught me 
actually just last year that I have found extremely helpful um, that I will pass along to you is if you find yourself stuck in a rut with how you say a line, um, if the line is, I'll be home soon, just imagine that you've said, I'll be home soon a thousand times. And, um, you know, there's so many different ways you can say I'll be home soon based on the intention that's behind it, right? Because if it's just something passing as you leave the door, I'll be home soon, that's one thing. If it's, um, what if it's a threat? I'll be home soon. You know, what if it's, um, what if it's begging someone? What if it's, I'll be home soon. You know, what if you're pleading with someone? You can say the same line a thousand different ways, right? But as actors, sometimes we get in our head one way that, oh, that's the way to say it. That's not true. There's a thousand different ways to say every line. So a trick you can use is to use the full range of your voice to say that line. Um, this sounds ridiculous. I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, go back and forth on every syllable using the very highest high of your range and then the very lowest low of your range. So it would be, right? That's ridiculous. But it helps so much because then the next time you say the line, I'll be home soon. You find that your body remembers that it can say things a different way and it will automatically do it. You will find a new emphasis in the line. Um, so that's what we have to do as actors is not fall into habits and give things their full meaning because when we fall into those habits, then suddenly they lose their importance. Um, so today I want to talk about sense and memory. I want to go to here. I'm going to start. Hey, Tori, how do I? Oh, look, I'm going to present now. Bottom right My corner. I got it. Boom. There you go. How do I share? Got it. Yes, share. Okay, I'm going to pull up something. Um, Uta Hagen is arguably the best actor, uh, acting coach of all time. And she wrote a book called Respect for Acting that I would highly recommend to. Um, to any aspiring performer uh, or, or singer. Any, if you're gonna be in the performing arts, read a book like this. But I'm gonna talk just a little bit about this. Respect, for, this is uh, the fifth chapter. Sense memory. Sense memory, the recall of physical sensations is often easier for the actor than the recall of his emotions. So we're not talking about emotions right now, we're just talking about physical sensations. Um, Oh wait, do you have, do, am, I, am I showing you the, the screen? I'm trying to figure that out. Um, I can see it in one of the small boxes. Oh, okay, wait, here, I'll close that there and I'll open it here. There you go. Ha ha, no, look, oh, here, what if I take it this way? There, now do you have it? In a small box, Miss Eiler, any suggestions? Huh. Miss, you're right, if you'll just um, pin, the screen, pin the small box, so we'll hover over the small box and, and click the pin on your screen, it'll make it bigger, and that's the same for the students. Okay, let's so see. So you guys will find, um, Mr. Creedy, if you'll pull back up your document there. Uh-huh. Um, and students, if you'll find the screen with the document, it's the same for you, Mr. Wright, and pin that screen, you'll see it larger. No. Tell me how to do that one more time, please. Hover over the screen with the number five sense memory at the top of it, and, and we'll see the little push pin and click on the push pin. Okay. It's just, uh, I've got an icon that's spinning. There we go. Let's see. I do. Every time I push that missile, it goes over to this corner, but, oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. Okay. I think we're good, Mr. Crady. Okay. Did it, did it work? You guys got it? I hope some of you have it. Um, okay. Sense memory. Sense memory is the recall of physical sensations. It's often easier for the actor than the recall of emotions. So most of us have to learn a correct technique for producing sensations so that they will be readily available to us. Um, we have to learn how to produce the things that we do naturally every day. Uh, if, we, if we just try to say, now I'm going to yawn, 
you'll fail. You have to learn, you have to think about everything that goes into yawning. You have to think about everything that involves um, being cold. Uh, I'm going to go to, let's see, here we go. Let's go to uh, being cold. Oh, no, here. If you're, if you're supposed to be hot, let's do this all together. If you're supposed to be hot, you must first ask yourself where on your body you are hottest. Localize one area. Okay, everyone, localize one area, for example, under the arms. Remember a sensation of stickiness, of perspiration trickling down, and then search for what you do to alleviate this sensation. Raise your arm slightly. See if you can pull your shirt or blouse sleeve away from the underarm to let in a little air. In that moment of adjustment or attempt to overcome the heat, you will have the sensation of heat. The rest of the body will feel hot too. Right? So it's not, it's not thinking to myself, I am hot, and then you'll be hot. Um, it is trying to overcome being hot right? It's the action that helps us realize the sensation. It's not just saying to myself, I am hot. Okay, let's do, um, to, to be cold. I actually find to be cold easier than hot. Uh, you are cold. Do not think cold all over. Localize one area you remember most vividly. So when you get cold, where do you feel it first? Imagine yourself, imagine right now that it's, you know, mid-December and you're walking to school, you're walking from the parking lot into school on one of those blizzard days. Where do you feel cold first? Um, try to recall the sensation and then immediately hunch up your shoulders and stiffen your back a little. Even make yourself shiver if you like and you will have a sensation of cold. We often shiver on purpose, not involuntarily, because shivering increases the circulation, right? The body will respond to the point where you may end up hopping from foot to foot and rubbing your hands in an effort to get warm. So it's, it's the action. It's always the action. It's always trying to overcome um, the sensation that leads us to. And then I start this, this next passage. Uh, I'm emphasizing the adjustments to overcoming the sensations because I believe that the sensation occurs most fully at the moment when we are occupied with the attempt to overcome it, not when we wait for it while trying only to imagine and remember it. Yeah. Ah, okay, and then this one too. If you take anything with you. The concern for showing, remember in, in acting we never try to show the audience how we feel. We just try to do. The concern for showing, when you try to show the condition, you will, it, it will lead to indication, to falseness. It is not your responsibility to show the condition, but to have it so you believe it and deal with it in terms of the play's action. Um, let's do one more, and then we'll end with some questions. I want to go back up to sleep. Where is that? I like this one. Okay, everybody, let's see. I'm on page 53 here. I hope some of you can read this along with me. It's a relief to discover what the simple psychological process of sleeping and waking entails and to find out how I can reproduce it in a matter of seconds, how I can execute it quickly, even after running from my dressing room after a quick costume change, jumping into the bed on stage as the curtain rises and the lights come up and convince myself and the audience that I have been deep asleep and am now waking up. Actually, I just had to, I had to do this. Uh, Last December, a, a year ago December, I did a, a show called Holiday Inn, and I had to be asleep on stage. And it proved trickier than, than I thought. I don't know. I, I haven't had to be asleep on stage very often. And I used this. To, uh, it's actually why I first sought out the book, because somebody told me that she deals with sense memory in this book. And um, anyway, I found this to be extremely helpful as, as a resource. Uh, to do this, okay, everybody, I want you to lie down. If you can hear my voice, lie down. Let's do this all together. Settle your body snugly into the bed, concentrating on only one area. So concentrate on the shoulders or the hips or the feet, for example. But just pick one area. Pick one of those, the shoulders or the hips or the feet. Now, close your eyes and center them straight ahead under your eyelids, which is the true sleep position, not downward, the way they usually are positioned when we first close our eyes. Right, so your eyes are center and straight ahead. 
you're concentrating on one area of your body, then direct your inner attention to an abstract object not connected with the given circumstance of the play. So um, think about a leaf or a cloud or a wave. Now direct your inner attention from the abstract object to something in the given circumstance. Like, what time is it? Have I overslept? What must I do today? Then open your eyes, sit up and pursue your objective. So everybody, don't do that, don't sit up yet. Lie down, concentrate on one area of your body, close your eyes, center them straight ahead under your eyelids. And before you open your eyes, think about, what am I supposed to do today? Or am I late? Then open your eyes, sit up, and check your alarm clock. Your eyes will feel heavy. Your body slowed down as if after a sleep. Uh, and by reflex, your entire behavior will be influenced for the ensuing activities. So. I think you put some of them asleep. <laughs> Good. Oh, I hope so. I hope everybody's dead asleep. But do you see how how doing that, how leading your body in, in, the, in a simple exercise like that can help convince you and then inform everything that you do thereafter. Um, it's these kind of games that you can play by yourself. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send these few pages to Mr. Wright so that he can, um, so that you can play with it on your own. Uh, because this is honestly one of the greatest acting books I've ever read. And there's so much of it here that you can do by yourself, which is what we're all doing right now. We're all learning by ourselves. Um, and if you do exercises like this enough, you know, it's interesting with dance, we, we practice, we stretch, we, uh, we go to dance class over and over and over with singing. We go to voice lessons. We, um, we warm up at home. We sing through material. What do you do for acting? Hey, Jeff, like, have, let me ask yeah. you a question real quick. It's, we've got four minutes left. Um, may, may we pick up on what you're talking about as we start session two? But give a few minutes for the kids to ask you questions. Yeah, absolutely. I so, think that's great. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions uh, about uh, auditioning, any questions about his experience, I mean, the sky's the limit, um, school appropriate, of course. So uh, who wants to ask a question? Abigail, unmute yourself. So what made you want to get into acting? Um, you know, I started theater like all of you guys at a pretty young age. I did my first show when I was in fourth grade. And um, I did shows ever since, all through middle school, high school, college. And I thought I was going to pursue acting when I started college. And then I came to New York and I saw Broadway for the first time. And I knew that I could never compete here because everybody is so talented in New York that um, it just didn't seem like a responsible choice for a career field for me. So I actually did a double uh, major in college. I did voice performance and music ed. And I taught school for two years uh, before I uh, went into performing because my girlfriend at the time convinced me to go to an audition and one thing led to another. And now here I am after 15 years of this. Um, but it was kind of by accident. Uh, I've been a big believer my whole life that uh, definitely my whole performing life that just because you enjoy something doesn't mean you have to make your living at it. Just because you enjoy theater, singing, performing, that doesn't mean that you have to do it for a living. So I always tell students, you know, it's great. You can enjoy theater and performing uh, as a hobby, and that's really respectable and awesome, too. Uh, in my case, the truth is I'm not very good at anything else. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of why I'm here. And you started in the company, right? We, we were talking about that early in the week. Um, you and Bradley Gibson, of course, is the star uh, in Lion King. He graduated from Pinecrest High School. Uh, he came and sang for Pinecrest in our community last year, and he mentioned that he started out in the, in the company. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's where most people begin is you got to be in the ensemble. Um, it's not easy to just come to New York and play starring roles. So most people will begin in the ensemble, but it's a whole different, you know, set of 
uh, of talents that you have to use. You have to you have to have a wider range in some ways to be in the ensemble than to play a role. So yeah, m most of the work that I've done on Broadway has been in the ensemble. Uh, I took over. I've understudied lead roles. You know, in in Les Mis, I understudied Jean Valjean. In Billy Elliot, I started as uh, an understudy for Tony, Billy's older brother, and then took over the role and played the role. Um, same with Gentleman's Guide, I understudied the lead role and then took it over. And in Tootsie, um, I, I just I was the understudy. So I've spent most of my career that way, being in the ensemble and covering lead roles. And then regionally, most of the time I play lead roles. And, um, but you got to be able to do both. You got to be flexible that way and um, and understand that a good ensemble, you will work so much more <laughs> um, if, if you, as, as a professional, you, you're able to work more consistently if you can be in the ensemble of a show. Okay. And some people who play lead roles are unable to be in the ensemble of a show because you have to be able to have a wider range in some ways. Um, so it yes. is, I appreciate that. So it is 11.59. Um, so we're, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I would like... Um, for us, when we think about coming back the week after um, spring break, and by the way, uh, kids, do not uh, think about my class at all next week. I want you to just get away from um, my class and just relax. Hopefully all school, if you can pull that off in your other classes. But uh, um, nonetheless, when we come back the week after next, some of you will be asked, and I'll have to figure out who, um, but I'm going to have some of you perform a monologue uh, for uh, Jeff as well so that he can go ahead and break down uh, your acting uh, with a monologue. That sound good? Okay. Well, listen, um, it's been a pleasure, Jeff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to you uh, after lunch today, and uh, we'll go ahead and um, post-conference uh, this session. Um, but children, what I'd like you to do now is just go ahead and say goodbye to Jeff, and then I need you all to hang up first. Bye. Bye, Jeff. Thank you. Bye, Jeff. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 And Miss Wiley Bye. and Miss Eiler, thank you for being Bye. here. Thank you. Bye. All right. I'm going to go turn off Facebook Live real quickly. Okay, great. All right. Good.